Hey guys, how you doing? Dr. Huber with you here today. Hey, we're going to talk about testosterone. And if you have the stereotypical belief that testosterone is just for muscle-bound guys or that testosterone is only important for erectile function, you've got a lot to learn. We're going to talk about that today, what it is, what it isn't, dispel some myths, and help you get an understanding of what's real about testosterone. We'll see you in a little bit. I just marinated it in plastic. We don't like plastic, we like glass. Why do we care about all this plastic? What's the big it's deal? It's a toxic bomb. Our whole practice is based on getting you to be the best version of yourself. Remove the crappy foods, the wheat, the dairy, the sugar. Everything we do is based in the medical literature and, and evidence-based medicine. We're gonna look at how to get you healthy, not how to get you on medicines, how to get you off medicine. There's a couple of very curious things that CBD oil does, helping people with migraine headaches reduce the frequency and intensity of the headache. People that have ADD or ADHD, anxiety or mood swings or depression. These things can help decrease anxiety and make a child more calm. Lyme has been found from coast to coast. 50% of all counties in the United States have Lyme disease documented. Well, how are we doing? All right, testosterone. Look, I'm feeling kind of chill today. Uh, my friend Chelsea's not with me, it's just you and I and we're recording this. I hope you can watch it live, but I know that a lot of you are gonna watch it after we record it and put it on the site. And I really want this time to answer a lot of questions. I think testosterone is an important issue. I know it's popular and it's trendy, but it's an important issue. And so I wanna go through and dispel some of the myths and talk about the real things related to testosterone. I see a lot of uses and abuses. Um, I see a lot of clinicians, a lot of traditional physicians, that don't really understand it or use it properly. And I wanna explain some of that away. So, as always, if you got questions, I wanna hear them because I wanna be able to answer your direct uh, questions that you have. Let's start off a little bit with understanding that when it comes to testosterone, this is not taught in med school. Once again, last week we talked about bioidentical hormones for women. There's a lot of similarities with men's hormones. We're really not taught this in med school. And actually, for years, there was this myth that somehow testosterone was bad for your heart and you shouldn't take it if you're a cardiovascular patient, which a lot of cardiologists are telling that to their patients and nothing could be further from the truth. So first of all, that is a bit of a myth. Um, so if we're not taught about this in, in med school, how did I get to understand this? Well, I did a lot of extra training outside of med school uh, in fellowships, and I'm fortunate enough to know some of the thought leaders, and in fact, I'm considered one of the thought leaders when it comes to hormone replacement therapies. Um, I, I teach for a couple of different fellowships, one is at George Washington University, and I teach physicians how to do this appropriately, effectively, and safely, which it can be done easily. A lot of docs don't get that proper training, and unfortunately, I get patients all the time that come in and they thought their testosterone was low, somebody started them on some therapy, and it may or may not have been the right dose or the right adjunct form at the time. So I wanted to dispel some of that miss. Let's start with what does testosterone do? You know, in the intro, I was joking around, you know, it's just for muscle-bound guys. It's for everybody. You know, I don't care if you weigh 98 pounds or 298 pounds, you need testosterone. It's important for your general function as a guy. I said last week, females make more testosterone than they do estrogen, surprised. And so guys make even more than females, and it's very important for repair. Let's go through the body and understand what testosterone does. We'll start upstairs in the brain. Cognition, memory, mental agility, okay? Mental stamina, sleep, mood, all right? We joke uh, about women having PMS and they get moody. Hey, guys are not off the hook on that one. You take away a guy's testosterone, he's just as moody, he's just as irritable. So. Testosterone has a big impact on our cognition, our mood, our sleep, our brain. We move downstairs a little bit, now we're in the area of the heart. When we talk about cholesterol, testosterone is key. In fact, your ability to form plaque in the vessels is dramatically reduced when your testosterone is normal. Not when you take testosterone, but when it's normal. It's ability to reduce your risk for heart attacks. We know in big studies, we looked at big groups of men and we lined them up based on their testosterone levels. And those at the higher end, had far fewer heart attacks, they actually lived longer, and far fewer heart problems, not only with cholesterol, but with blood sugar. So when we talk about our heart, our heart is healthier when we have good testosterone levels. I'm talking about good balance levels, not exceedingly high, but definitely not low. 
It affects blood sugar, which directly affects our heart. Okay, so all very important for cardiovascular health. And the number one causes of death in this country, uh, both cancer and heart disease, uh, heart attacks, testosterone plays a role in reducing the risk of both of those. So it's key, it's an immune modulator as well. We move down a little further, now we're into the belly. Yep, guys with low T have bigger bellies. Also, guys with bigger bellies tend to have low T, all right? So when testosterone drops, your ability to burn fat really begins to tail off, making it harder and harder for you to lose weight. It's also harder for you to exercise. Your stamina isn't there. So if you can't exercise and the belly is getting bigger, again, that correlates with low testosterone. We'll see what's beyond the belly. A little bit lower? Oh, yeah, Mr. Happy, okay? So the whole idea that sex drive and erectile function are direct result of testosterone, yeah, it's a very important part. Now, I want to bring this up because this is key. A lot of guys go, man, I'm having trouble with some ED. Uh, erectile function or drive is not great. And they end up getting put on high-dose testosterone to fix that. And if that's the only problem, sometimes that works. But I want to tell you now because next week, we're going to talk about erectile dysfunction directly. We're going to talk about gains wave. We're going to talk about how to repair that. But if you have erectile dysfunction, there are three things that are very important. Testosterone is only one of those things. The other thing is blood flow, right? And what can we do to rectify the blood flow? And then neurologically. So neurologic function, vascular function, and hormonal function are needed for erectile dysfunction. I tell you that because if you're just taking high-dose testosterone and you're saying it's not getting any better, it's because the other two haven't been addressed, okay? And that's where somebody like myself, somebody who's first integrative medicine can help complete the picture to make that work better. But yeah, testosterone is important for sex drive and erectile function. Uh, and then we go even further and now we're into muscle and bone. Well, duh. So testosterone is very important for muscle. We know that just muscle repair. If you go out for a long run, you go to the gym and you lift weights, you're tearing muscle down. And that's fine because you're going to rebuild that muscle at night and it's going to come back stronger. Ah, at night, if you sleep and if you have the anabolic testosterone there to repair. If you don't have it to repair, then this is the guy that's, I'm working out harder and harder and harder, but I'm not getting anywhere. My body's not feeling more fit. I'm not losing weight. So oftentimes it's from a low testosterone level. And bone density, absolutely. Bone density very much advantage when testosterone is normal. So you can see the testosterone affects the entire body. Now who does it affect? Uh, just old guys, right? Just guys that are like in their 70s and 80s. No. In fact, there was a study done 10 years ago that showed from the 1980s to the 1990s and into the 2000s, testosterone levels as a whole in our culture is going down. That means a 58 year old guy in 1985 compared to a 58-year-old guy in 1995 or 2005, with each successive decade, men of the same age have lower testosterone than the decade before. Well, what's going on? So there's a lot of literature. I'm going to summarize it really quick. There's a number of things you need to think about. It's not just older men. It can affect, I have guys in my practice that are in their 20s, their 30s, their 40s with low testosterone. And so if you have some of the symptoms, let's go to symptoms and we'll come back to who. The symptoms are just everything is declining. My cognition, my mood, my physicality, my strength, my recovery from workouts, my stamina. I call it the wilting of the American male, right? We just, we're not who we used to be in, in any degree, not just in the bedroom, in the boardroom and in the, in the uh, exercise room. I right? like my exercise room. Um, we just don't feel as good as we did. We don't recover as well. Any of those symptoms can be a sign of low testosterone. And by the way, erectile dysfunction and low sex drive are the last thing to go. All those other things that I mentioned typically happen first. My blood sugar starts to rise, I start getting a belly, my energy is lower. And then lastly, my erectile dysfunction occurs. So if you don't have ED and you don't have a problem with sex drive, you still could have low testosterone. It's worth getting it checked, all right? So across the spectrum, guys at all different ages uh, can have problems, but why? What is going on in these last three, four decades that we're seeing this decline? It's very interesting, and it makes a lot of sense when you make a look at the causes. Number one, trauma. So if you've had head trauma, our brain sends a signal to our gonads that says make testosterone. But if our brain has been, if we've been knocked unconscious, let's say we played football in high school. I wasn't knocked unconscious, but you got hit in the head over and over and over and over again. Uh, that can cause it playing lacrosse or hockey or playing sports. But being in a car accident, or maybe you got knocked unconscious, 
Um, anything where you may have had a couple of significant head traumas, not that you fractured your skull, but where you either lost consciousness or nearly lost consciousness, that can cause the brain's function to prematurely age, okay? That is not sending the signal to the testicles to work. Hmm. So trauma can be a part of it. Another one is toxins. And there are two primary toxins I'm gonna to bring up. Number one, plastics, right? We talked about that with our kitchen detox video. And if you haven't seen that, go look at it. It's relevant to you. But looking at how much plastic you're coming in contact with, plastic bottles and Tupperware, that's all in the other video. But think about as you go through your day, how many times did you make coffee using a Keurig cup, right? That's plastic. Did you store your lunch in a Tupperware container? Uh, did you put it in a plastic bag? Did you drink from plastic bottles? BPA, phthalates, and plasticizers, these are the things in plastics. These compounds have been correlated with every single sexual dysfunction known to man. If we're talking about women, they've been correlated with endometriosis, with breast cancer, with infertility, uh, with hormone uh, dysfunction, with men, low testosterone, low sperm motility, uh, erectile dysfunction. So plastics in general are horrible on testosterone's ability to function in your body. That's one of the biggest toxins. Other toxins matter too, like pesticides and herbicides, so eating organic does matter. The other toxin is drug therapy, polypharmacy. You know, the US of A is only 5% of the world population. Okay, but that's 5%. Us, USA citizens, consume 50% of all the drugs made globally. Drugs aren't evil, but boy, do we take a lot of them. And if you're on three, four, five drugs, recognize there are at least two dozen different classes of medications, statins being one of them, metformin being one of them, beta blockers being another. There's multiple drugs that have been shown to lower testosterone. That's one of the classic problems with statin use. If you need a statin, then you need to take it, but recognize it can increase your risk for diabetes and it definitely can increase or decrease your testosterone level. So drugs and plastics, I look at those as kind of that toxic stew that can lower testosterone. The other very important category is sleep and stress. Nobody, nobody has stress, right? Everybody has stress, but you know, depending on what you're doing in mitigating that stress, stress causes cortisol, and as cortisol goes up, that's your fight or flight hormone. If you're making cortisol every day because you're, you're an intense person, you've got a busy schedule, and you've got a lot on your plate, you may love what you do. You may be delighted with your day. But if it's overly packed, and stresses are everything. Stresses, weather, food, sleep patterns, exercise patterns. But if your body's under a lot of stress and cortisol tends to rise, it lowers testosterone. They're inversely related. So stress commonly causes a low testosterone. Now think about it. What if you're drinking from plastic and you're stressed and you're not sleeping and you're taking some meds? All those things begin to pile up and potentially lead you down that path where your testosterone might be low. Okay, good to think about. Stress often leads to poor sleep. Guess what? If you're getting poor sleep, if I have a perfectly healthy 35-year-old and I begin to erode his sleep, wake him up, shorten his sleep cycle, his testosterone can be lower because of it, okay? So we talk about head trauma, toxins like plastic and drugs, stress and sleep, and then lastly, big bellies and sugar or weight gain and sugar, all right? Yeah. Multiple studies have shown if I get up and have a big bowl of cereal and a bagel and a glass of orange juice, that's a lot of sugar. And if I have that for breakfast, I will reduce my testosterone level by 25%. Studies vary. Some say as much as 40%, some say as low as 10%. But high sugar diets lower our ability to make testosterone. And as we eat those high sugar diets, we tend to gain weight. Weight, excessive adipose, fat will be damaging to our testosterone. So again, think about how many of these different elements you were beginning to put together. And not everybody that's got belly fat and doesn't sleep well is gonna have low T. But those are factors that we definitely have to put into the equation. So if you're feeling like you're not your old self, if you're feeling sluggish in the gym, if you can't lose weight, all of these symptoms may be low T, but a lot of us would say, but I have great sex life, so it must not be that. It's not always the case. So I want you to begin to think of testosterone not as just something that bodybuilders abuse or that affects your, your nether regions, your groin, your erectile function. Testosterone affects everything, blood sugar, cholesterol, brain, heart, bone, muscle. It's a broad, broad, broad spectrum. Um, and not that you should be paranoid about it, but it's worth having it checked. And then if it is checked, 
What should you do about it, right? Okay, I had it checked and it was less than ideal. And by the way, normal human testosterone ranges 500 to 700 in that ballpark. There are very few individuals living at 800 or 900 with their testosterone. I've seen a few. I have never seen a living, breathing human being on his own produce testosterone above 1,000. I have seen patients come into my clinic saying, I'm getting testosterone therapy and my practitioner wants my levels at 1,200 or better. That's crazy, all right, because that's not normal and that will create other problems. If you overly, you know, we have this, this mindset in America that more is always better, right? If 700 is good, 800 is better. Not necessarily. When you overload the body with too much testosterone, it has a ton of adverse effects that can be problematic. It can make your prostate grow. It can convert into estrogen. It can turn down the receptors so they don't work as well. I say that because I see guys out there trying to get their testosterone above 1,000, and that's not a good place to be. There's no literature to support that that's healthy or good for your heart or good for your brain or good for your body, period. Okay, so understand that at a healthy range is five to seven hundred is normal for most guys. If it's at four hundred, that may not be a big issue. As it gets down toward three, yeah, that's not great. You're probably going to feel and function better if we get it out of the threes and closer to five. All right, how do we do that? Well, I'm just going to give you tons of testosterone. No, no. There are some people that need to replace testosterone directly as a shot or a pellet or a topical cream, but if you're under the age of 60, the odds of you needing testosterone directly is very, very small. If you walk into a clinic and you're 45 years old and they say, you need a testosterone pellet, no, you don't. Because there are ways of making your body make your own testosterone. First of all, it's a heck of a lot cheaper. Second of all, it's a lot healthier. Thirdly, far fewer problems associated with it. Um, and you're, you're generating your own natural circadian rhythm of testosterone, which is what your body knows and responds well to, okay? So just understand, there's lots of options out there. And if somebody suggested you that a pellet is the only option, that's never the correct answer. It's never the only option. If you're under the age of 60, more than likely, 90, 95% chance, we can get your body to make its own testosterone in healthy levels, okay? And if that's never been offered, then we probably need to talk about that because that's something that's, that's very beneficial. I unfortunately see guys come in, not uncommonly, that have had a testosterone experience that wasn't ideal. And I've even seen them pay extreme amounts of money just to replace testosterone, okay? I've seen guys come in and say they pay $3,000 a year just to have their testosterone balanced. It costs less than half of that. Okay, so just understand there are lots of options out there. Unfortunately, since the vast majority of doctors out there are never taught anything about hormone replacement therapies, that's why you have so many varied opinions. Okay, and like I say, I talk with providers and researchers across the country, and there's, there's a lot of answers, and sometimes you reach somebody who only has one answer, right, and that's not the best place for you. I'm emphatic about that because I see guys that are put in situations that may not be the best thing for them. And I'm all about health. I want you to be healthy. I want you to live long. I want you to be 85 on the golf course, not 85 in the nursing home, okay? And so we're looking at longevity and what's really good for your body overall. Um, I want to hear any questions if you have them. I, next week, I want to go into talking about specifically erectile dysfunction because I think that's um, a related topic, slightly different, uh, and there's some important things we need to discuss in that regard. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. And uh, Chris, do we have? We do. So how do we test for low T? The simplest way is blood test, and that's what's nice about it because it's a simple blood draw, and it's inexpensive. It doesn't cost much. Um, again, I see people roped into systems where we're going to do everything for you, and it's this amount of money. The lab testing is very inexpensive. Um, and we just check your blood and we see what your testosterone is, but not just T, right? Not just testosterone. You look at testosterone and estradiol, that's your estrogen. Men make estrogen, did you know that? So men take testosterone and convert it into estrogen, and it's important. You want some. You don't want too much. Prostate grows heavily if you get too much. You don't want too little. Without estrogen, your bones and your heart may be at risk. So we measure testosterone, estradiol, DHT, DHT is dihydrotestosterone, that's a metabolite of testosterone. That's an important marker. There needs to be a specific balance there. We look at sex hormone binding globulin. That's an important 
uh, marker to assess you know, your general health and your risk for diabetes. Um, and if we find that those things are low, then we may even need to get some other tests like prolactin. And not that these are repeated every single time we see you, but at least initially we need to get a good spectrum. But all those are simple blood tests, uh, quite simple to do. And if that's off, then we need to do a more critical look at your glucose and your lipids and cholesterol. Okay? All right. As far as treatment, um, say I, I think I do have low T. Could I just start working out? Would that resolve the problem, or is there more to it? Yeah. Uh, if you think you have low T, will working out help? Absolutely. Um, the things we talked about, right? So let's say I'm not working out and I'm gaining a little bit of weight and my sleep isn't good. Can correcting those things correct your testosterone? Sometimes, yes, especially if you're younger. You know, if you're in your 30s or 40s, uh, then the body is much more able to regain that functionality. If that's kind of your MO, um, I would encourage some simple things. So yes, exercise, resistance training is good. High intensity intervals can be helpful. Um, if you're an endurance athlete, I love to bike. It's a big secret. I haven't told anybody I love to bike. Um, but being on a bike two or three hours, or if you're a marathon runner, or if you do triathlon, endurance athletes, the strain of those sports tend to elevate cortisol and lower testosterone. It's very common in the professional ranks when you look at professional cyclists and triathletes and so forth. It's not uncommon for those guys to end up with low testosterone. Do you love the UFC? I do. These guys are getting kicked in the head over and over and over again, right? They're getting punched in the face. Do you think they're going to have low T a little earlier in life? I do, uh, because of all that head trauma. So getting back to your question, yes, some exercise, some resistance training. Go into it slowly, right? Don't become a maniac, but get into some resistance training. Do some high-intensity interval training. Change your diet. Go toward keto. Have I said that before? Ketogenic diet, very helpful. Nurture a good sleep habit. That's important. That's important for your muscles to recover. And if you do those simple things, better food, better sleep, little exercise, it's amazing how the body can repair and recover. So yeah, that's a great start point. So I think that I have low T. What should I do to, uh, to get started? Should I call or how do I, how do I get in front of you? To help yeah, uh, very simple. You'll say call our office. Uh, we're air code 513-924-5300. Okay, that's our office. Very, very simple. Uh, we'll get a questionnaire, and we're, if you're focused on T, you're like, I just need to know if my T's off. We're going to look at that, but we're going to look at everything else. We're going to look at glucose and lipids and just how you function, because now I hope you understand that everything, stress and sleep and exercise, all that relates to if T is low, why is it low? So that's a great place to start. Call our office. What will happen, um, I will meet with you. Dr. Bianco is in our office. He might meet with you and get a really complete history to try to find out where are you struggling? Where do we need to make an impact? For example, let's say your testosterone is low, but you work you know, 20 hours a day and you're stressed and you're flying all over the country. Hmm, we're gonna need to work on that cortisol. If we don't dampen that, then just trying to get your testosterone up by itself may be lackluster. And, I, and that's what I see with some guys. They go and they get testosterone pellets, but that's it. And nobody's addressing their cortisol, their thyroid, their glucose, their sleep, all those other factors. Um, if you'd come in, yeah, we get a complete history. We find out where, where you may have damaged testosterone production. We get a blood test, and we, we start with that. We get a baseline. And then from there, we decide what's the best therapy for you. Testosterone is always an option. I do testosterone pellets. I do testosterone injections, testosterone cream. But that's probably not, depending on your age, where you start. A lot of guys, don't, they, they don't need that until they're in their 70s. A lot of guys, if they're in their 40s, 50s, and even early 60s, don't need to take testosterone directly. And that's where we're going to work with you to help get your levels up to a normal without having to give you testosterone directly. Okay? All right. Hey, guys, great questions. Um, we're going to have, uh, this is obviously is going to be posted and, you know, share this with friends or, or family. Uh, this is an important issue. It's an important health issue. And it really can make the difference about, uh, in terms of your cardiovascular risk, uh, your cognitive, the quality of your life, okay, and, and uh, maintaining, maintaining good health. Next week, we're going to take it the next step. We're going to talk specifically about erectile dysfunction. We're going to talk about gains wave. We're going to talk about different therapies. Because remember, erectile dysfunction is not just testosterone. It's vascular flow and it's nerve. And we're going to begin to discuss that. And that'll be a fun discussion as well. 
Thanks for tuning in. Thanks if you're watching this uh, as a recording. And as always, if you have any questions, contact your office. We love to engage people and, and educate. That's what we're all about. That's why we're sitting here today. All right. Have a great day. Hope you're doing well. Take care. Thank you.